Hi, uh, Dave Smith here, DJS Photography. Uh, I've got another video uh, in my mind here, so uh, so here it is. Uh, tripods. Now, I know what you're thinking. Not the sexiest of subjects, uh, but I have been asked for a, for a video about the tripods. So, uh, so I thought I would just get one together today. I've got uh, two tripods here to show you. I've switched my... Um, D800 which I uh, video these things with I've switched it off my normal tripod and I put it on a really old slick tripod with a pan tilt head the slick is the first tripod that I ever bought when I got uh, into photography uh, about nearly 30 years ago now and it's quite interesting that it's still with me uh, I don't use it so much anymore but uh, it's still around and it still gets a little bit of use uh, so that tells you something about uh, about that tripod. Uh, and you know, they remember the old adage that uh, the best camera is the one you've got with you. Same for tripods. The thing I'm leaning on is the tripod that I use for um, the large format. I think you can just see the 10x8 in, in the frame just here. This is, uh, well, it's a beast to be honest. Uh, weighs a ton. Uh, must be, gosh, I don't know. Uh, so seven, eight, nine kilos, maybe more. A uh, really heavy thing. Uh, you're definitely not going backpacking with this. It's the O75B Manfrotto legs and uh, the 400 geared head. They don't make uh, they don't make this particular version of the 400, but they still do make the 400 geared head. It's mighty expensive, and I think to uh, if I were to be replacing this tripod it, and head, it would probably be in the region of a thousand euros or more. Uh, it's really impressive. Let me just take you through a little bit of it. The uh, legs are a uh, three section, uh, sprung loaded and braced, uh, center column. Uh, again, big hefty center column. That's also geared, that runs, uh, tightens on the screw here, and you see that just sits there and just runs up and down with this handle here. This handle will fold uh, away to keep it out of the way, uh, so it's just a little sprung little clip there. Um, then we come up to the head, now, the head is that lot right there, uh, and really heavy beast. Geared in every direction, so this uh, handle here. Uh, tilts side to side. I think I think you can see that going there. Okay, so it just tilts that base side to side. Let me just take that all the way. So it goes from that angle there and all the way to the other side. I don't know what these angles are. It looks to be something in the region of ten degrees, I guess. But if you're interested, you can get uh, you can get the specs online. Then we've got two. Uh, handles on each side here, and then two little buttons that just release the actual handle. And this one uh, rotates just like so, and pretty, um, pretty solid, pretty kind of good feel to that. Even though this m this must be getting on for half a century old. I didn't buy it brand new. It must be a really old piece of kit, and it just works so smoothly even now. Then there's a, another one like this right at the back that I think you can't quite see there. But that's the tilt, and it go all the way forwards. Take that on this massive worm gear here, all the way. Can you imagine 10 bay camera on the top of that? And that is that is 90 degrees forwards, and it'll go 30 degrees uh, to the back. So it, I can put that 10 by 8 on and and uh, get that shooting vertically down. That's I have to say that's pretty impressive. Okay, I won't go any further back than that. It does go 30 degrees back. Over here we've got the quick release plate. This is a 3 8 inch um, bolt which goes into the both large formats actually. I have a 10 by 8 here and a 14 by 17 over there. And this is the high profile version. Uh, on this 10x8 here, I think you can just see I've got the low profile version. Now, really I need the high profile on there. These, 
these get swapped about because um, because they don't uh, this doesn't pack well with these uh, with these uh, brackets on so I take them off uh, when I'm packing it down uh, and you'll see why in a minute when I put the 10 by 8 on you'll see why it needs that so this is the tripod uh, bought this uh, soon after the slick actually um, I very quickly decided to get into large format and that was 5 by 4 at the time and I bought this to uh, to hold the 5 by 4 camera which in those days was uh, a Wister I don't have the Wister anymore uh, little, I kind of regret that, it's a beautiful camera um, so that's that's when I got this and I've had it ever since uh, it doesn't travel well um, but it's uh, incredibly sturdy and I sometimes, I have been putting the Fuji on here but I'll mention more about that in a moment. Now you can just see there's a lever sticking out here if I put this on there's a groove in here and that slots underneath there on that side, sorry underneath this is the fixed side over here underneath the fixed side and as I push that down you'll hear a click and it pushes a plunger here that releases the spring and closes that. And I usually just give that a little push and that's absolutely rock solid. To take that off you'd open that lever but it stops and there's a little push pin under here that you have to push to release and just pops off. So let me put the uh, 10 by 8 on there so that you can see and I'm just going to do the same thing. You can hear that clicking, it's dead easy. Now, uh, if I rotate it to this way around, I think you might see why you want the high profile. Because as I turn this, right, just that that starts to catch right there. Okay, and if I okay, and you can see that's going 30 degrees back. But it's just it's not quite catching, but it's not easy to manipulate. I'm going to run that forwards so that you can see. And the 10 by 8 pointing straight down. Not a common way to use a 10 by 8, it did have to be said. But if you if you need to, you need to. And there it is. So you would use the high the high profile on this because you can see very little clearance in here. Okay? Let's bring that back up. We'll just move this tripod out of the way because uh, one of the one of the problems I had with tripods recently was uh, travelling. Uh, I do quite a bit of uh, travelling. I work in uh, I work here in Belgium. Let's move that over there. Uh, but my house is in North Sweden, uh, and I travel extensively anyway. So I wanted a tripod <coughs> for travelling. Excuse me. The slick would go in my medium-sized suitcase, and I have used that. But it's quite a it's quite a heavy tripod. It's aluminium. Um, it's got a pan tilt head, which I'm not wild about. Uh, and I was looking at other uh, heads. I looked at ball heads, and I was looking at the Manfrotto three-way head. I didn't buy the Manfrotto three-way head in the end, and I probably could have done. But what what me off it was uh, uh, the max maximum load so in the end what, what I I looked at lots of tripods I was quite interested in the uh, Coleman I think Coleman do a funny tripod that sort of all the legs kind of fold flat uh, into a, a line with each other and that will sit very flat in your suitcase but my, my and I was really tempted by it but my problem with it was I saw it set up in a shop and there's no exaggeration. Put my finger on it and the thing wobbled everywhere. Now it might, it might be that they hadn't set it up well or it wasn't locked down as it should have been, but um, it kind of put me off really, you know. So I looked some more and uh, I was interested in carbon fibre. I, mean, I have a, an aluminium gitso, uh, which is actually up in Sweden at the moment, so I can't, I can't show you that. Um, but I've had that for a number of years as well. I said that's quite a, that's a big tripod. Um, I took it up to Sweden to shoot with it before I got uh, this thing here. 
and it was too it was too big to then kind of bring back at the time so I just left it there and this is the result of quite a bit of research I looked at a lot of tripods uh, this is one of the Korean South Korean models it's a pro gold carbon fiber tripod it's nice and light it's uh, four section legs made in carbon fiber all the legs have this sort of spongy stuff on to uh, give you an insulation center column okay, which is smooth uh, all the operations on this are nice and smooth this is uh, a ball head this is the uh, photo clamp ball head with the Kirk style uh, uh, quick release plate uh, and it's actually pretty good if I, I can just, just about move that and the pressure setting is at uh, between 4 and 5 um, and it goes up to 10 so that's a pretty solid ball head quite frankly uh, holds the um, holds the um, D800 with um, sort of big 70 to 200 lens on it which is which is a heavy combination now I want to travel uh, this summer I have a I have a trip to uh, northern Norway and across through northern Finland and back down to my house in North Sweden. And uh, what, I, what I wanted to do was to take the Fuji. I have a Fuji GX680 and I have some videos up if you're, uh, if you're interested in, uh, in that camera system. It is phenomenal. And I, don't, I haven't, haven't really travelled with the Fuji before because I've, uh, I've been concerned about what to put it on. It's, it's definitely not a handhold device. Um, but I tested it on this thing and, uh, and, and it held it without any trouble at all. So I am actually going to travel with the Fuji and I'm taking this uh, to hold it. Um, and I think this was a, an excellent buy. I don't remember what the price was now but uh, I want to say for the whole lot, ball head as well, maybe three, 350 euros. Um, and it's really served well. I took this to uh, the Iceland trip and the winds were gale force 8. Um, now I did have to hang on to it in those winds otherwise you know, my camera and tripod would be kind of bouncing across the lava field um, off into the uh, Arctic Ocean um, which I'm guessing wouldn't do the camera too much good. But uh, an excellent buy. It, it's brilliant for travelling. It will fit easily into uh, my carry-on suitcase. I don't usually do that with it because I'm usually carrying on my camera gear and this will go in my checked uh, suitcase but it'll fit in this it'll fit in the smallest suitcase for uh, carry-on uh, without any trouble. It weighs barely anything. I highly recommend it uh, and it definitely isn't um, you know sort of six seven eight nine hundred euros that some of these carbon fiber tripods can be and the ball head also is uh, is a real bargain and you can see truly solid as a rock so that would be uh, my recommendation photo clamp ball head pro gold tripod from south korea uh, came in just a few days the uh, vendors were saying you know allow up to two weeks it was literally four or five days and the thing was delivered uh, really really good buy. So that's a couple of tripods that I've got uh, here in Belgium. Uh, I might do a supplement to this and just show you the uh, Gitso and I think I, I think I will be putting the Manfrotto three-way head onto the Gitso so I'll have this for a ball head. I have the three-way head I think I'm going to prefer for the Fuji to be honest um, in the end. Uh, but there you go, uh, a little bit on uh, tripods. Um, if you've got any questions uh, feel free to ask, uh, drop me a line. Um, would really love to see people um, getting over to the blog and subscribing. I've just worked out how I can put in a subscribe by email link um, and, and I am planning all kinds of um, developments for the blog, um, newsletters in the future and ebooks. Uh, so I think it might be worth um, it, I think it might be worth subscribing particularly if you like the videos that I'm making. Anyway, that's my little piece on tripods. Thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.